Hey guys, I'm Annika Sabine. I grew up in the Arctic. Please make sure you subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. It really helps us out. My last memory of human life was from when I was 10 years old. I remembered my mother carrying me out into this icy landscape. The wind was blasting us with thousands of icy crystals, and I held onto my mother tight. But she let go of me and dropped me on the freezing floor. Mama! My mom turned and ignored me. She disappeared, and that was the only memory I had of her. I didn't even know what her face looked like. The trauma of being abandoned in the Arctic had wasted away what memory I had left. So now all I knew was that my name was Annika Sabine. After she abandoned me, I was devastated. But I decided I wasn't going down without a fight. I was determined to survive. I learned how to make a fire out of sticks in the woods left nearby. I learned how to make an igloo to shield myself from the snowstorms. I lived off seal meat and sometimes even polar bear meat. Life was tough and boring until one fateful day. I was about 16 years old. I had just returned from fishing when I noticed that smoke was coming out of my igloo. I felt my heart skip a beat. I hadn't lit a fire, so why was there any smoke? Was an intruder in my home? I sprinted as fast as I could and barged in, my spear in hand. Get out, you! I froze. It was a guy, and he looked about my age. He was wearing a coat made out of bear fur, and as he looked up at me, I noticed his gorgeous brown eyes. Who… who are you? I'm Sake. The boy coughed. <laughs> I'm sorry for barging in. Get out! I didn't really know how to react, but I sure as heck knew I didn't want him staying any longer. I'd lived on my own my whole life. I didn't need someone else bothering me. I'm sorry. I needed some warmth. I… I don't care! You need to leave! But then I hesitated, because suddenly, Sake was leaning to one side, and then he collapsed. I just stood there, unsure of what to do. I had an unconscious guy in my igloo. I could leave him outside to die. The polar bears could have him. I could care less. But just as I was about to drag him out, something made me stop. No, this wasn't right. <sighs> oh, why do I have to be so righteous? I wrapped Sake in one of my blankets and fed him some soup while he slipped in and out of consciousness. He had a fever. When he finally woke up, he looked much better and healthier. He told me everything about where he'd come from. My uncle and I used to live just over the mountains there. But two days ago, he slipped and fell off a ledge. He… he didn't make it. Oh, I I'm so sorry. My uncle told me I had family in England, and we used to have a radio, but that broke down. I was stranded here, and I was never really the best at survival, so I started walking to look for help. Then, I found you. While my mind was still trying to process what an England was and who radio was, I didn't even understand these words or knew what they were, noises sounded from outside. What is that? Shh. We stayed quiet and listened, and then my blood turned cold. Well, colder. Polar bears. Oh no. You stay here. No, I can help. I didn't wait to hear him out and left the igloo. I was right about the noises. We were surrounded by polar bears. They roared at me fiercely. I started swinging to try and fight them off. But no matter how hard I tried, they were too much for me. I soon became overwhelmed, and one of them lunged for my throat. I closed my eyes, accepting defeat. Then suddenly, out of nowhere, I heard a squeal and all the polar bears scattered. I turned to see Sake standing in front of me, protecting me from the polar bears. Sake? Sake turned and smiled down at me. I realized just how cute he was. Are you okay? Sake helped me up and we stared at each other for a while. I had the sudden urge to hug him, or even kiss him. But before anything more could happen, a plane appeared suddenly, flying really low toward us. Sake and I stared in shock. I'd never seen a plane before. I was speechless. Is it a rescue team? Maybe it… But the next words were snatched by the wind of the plane's blades as they came plummeting toward us. We screamed and dove out of the way, just in time. If we dodged a second too late, we would have been minced meat. The plane seemed to lose control and suddenly it crashed into the icy ground. Oh my god! A giant cloud of smoke rose in the air as the plane sat there like broken glass. Sake and I took one look at each other, then we started sprinting towards the plane. We arrived and searched desperately for any survivors. Over here! I followed Sake's voice and found him pulling out a woman. It looked like she was in her 40s. For some reason, I felt like I recognized her. But I shook the thought away quickly and together we dragged her out of danger. 
We double-checked for more survivors, but it seemed she had been the only one on board. What do we do now? We have to bring her back home. Sakei lifted the woman in his arms and we carried her back. For days, the woman remained unconscious, in a coma of some sort. Meanwhile, Sakei and I cared for her. One day, I entered the igloo with some wood cut up in a bundle. As I stepped in, I tripped on one of our blankets and went tumbling. But Sakei appeared like some kind of prince and caught me before I face planted. I held on to him and we stared at each other for a while. Our lips were inches apart. I felt myself move closer. Where am I? We turned to find the woman sitting up in bed, wide-eyed. She looked at us. Where am I? She repeated. I pushed away from Sake and knelt by the woman. You're in the Arctic. The Arctic? Yes. The woman looked at Sake suddenly. Who are you? Um, I'm Sake. The woman looked at me. You're Annika? I was taken <sighs> aback. How did you know my name? The woman blinked, then suddenly looked away. I heard that guy say your name. Oh. <clears throat> I cleared my throat. Look, you're probably under a lot of shock. You crash-landed in a plane. Do you remember what happened? The woman hesitated. Um, I was flying over towards Greenland. Greenland? It's a country close to here. I'm... Uh, I'm a journalist, you see. A journalist? Wow. Yeah. What's your name? Mandy Sa... <clears throat> uh, um, Mandy Sandy. Mandy Sandy. Nice name. Mandy soon became a part of the little family we'd built here. Except Sake and I did most of the work. Mandy just sat around like some kind of princess. Mandy, can you help me light the fire? No, I'm so tired from helping out with the fishing. You didn't even do anything. You just sat there and complained. It was very tiring. <sighs> Why, I oughta... Sake held me back. Don't. Just ignore her. But she's so annoying. I know. But if we want to survive out here, we have to work together. <sighs> Fine. Sake could be so righteous sometimes. Ugh, it was so annoyingly adorable. The next day, I had to say goodbye to Sake. He was taking a trip to the eastern end of the valley to look for more food since we were experiencing shortages after Mandy joined us. He would be gone for two days. I was dreading it. Just be safe, okay? Sake pulled his bag over his shoulder, smiling his beautiful smile. Of course. Try not to murder Mandy, okay? <laughs> I'll try. I hesitated, then I hugged him tightly. Before we pulled away, I gave him a quick kiss on the cheek. He smiled and brushed my forehead with a finger. See you soon. I waved goodbye. Where's he going? Mandy must have just woken up. I groaned inwardly. Great. Now I was stuck with Her Majesty Mandy. He'll be back soon. How soon? What did she care? Two days. Hmm. I looked at Mandy strangely, then grabbed my own bag. I'm heading to your crash site. I'll be back in a few hours. Why are you going there? Was it just me, or did she sound a little panicked? Just looking for supplies. Jeez. What's with all the questions? I said goodbye and took off. For some reason, I felt like Mandy was hiding something from me. Half an hour later, I arrived at the crash site. Plane debris still scattered on the ground. It was so creepy. I started rummaging through anything that looked salvageable. When I came upon what looked like a purse, hmm, this must be Mandy's. I opened it up and sure enough, it had something that must have been money, credit cards, and an ID. I glanced at the ID, but what I saw made my blood run cold. Instead of the name Mandy Sandy, like she told us, the ID said her real name was Mandy Sabine. Sabine! That was my last name! Why did Mandy have the same last name as me? Was that a coincidence? No, it couldn't be. The fact that she lied proved that she was hiding it from me. But why? What? Then it hit me like a ton of bricks. Mandy. I knew I recognized her from somewhere. Mandy was my mom! You shouldn't have come here, Annika! <gasps> I spun around. Mandy. My mom? She stood there grimly. You're... you're... Go on. Say it. You're my mom! Mandy smiled, but it lacked all warmth. Yep. But I don't understand! Why are you here? Why did you abandon me? Mandy sighed. She turned to me. Because I hated you. I winced. I hated you and I didn't want you. You ruined my life. I could have been a model of Victoria's Secret fashion show. But no. You just had to come along and ruin my body. 
I worked as a journalist instead. A stupid, boring job. But one day, my work took me over to the Arctic. That's when I saw my chance. I dumped you here like the worthless thing that you are. And I left you. And I don't regret my decision one bit. You're a monster. It's nothing personal. Just business. But why are you back here then? If you hate me so much, why did you come back? <sighs> Mandy rubbed her face. That's the only annoying part of my plan. You survived. You weren't supposed to do that, you know. Now you're all over the news. Some satellite or something spotted you here all on your own. I knew I had to come back and dispose of you before anyone found out what I did. Dispose of me? Oh my god, my mother really was a monster. How could I be related to her? Yep. Sorry, honey. Mandy lifted a spear from behind her back. The world will never know. Suddenly, anger coursed through my veins. How could life be so unfair? No, I won't let you win! I stamped my foot on the ground, but as I did, a crack appeared beneath me. <gasps> Mandy froze too. She looked at the crack, which was quickly spreading and widening by the second. She backed away. I looked around and realized suddenly that we were on a frozen lake. How could I have missed that? Mandy backed away and stumbled, sending more cracks into the fragile ground. Mandy, wait! I screamed as suddenly the floor seemed to disappear and I plummeted into the icy water below. I screamed as the cold bit into my skin like razor-sharp blades. I managed to push up and grab onto the ledge of the ice, but I couldn't pull myself out of the water. Mandy, help! Mandy just stood there and watched me as I flailed about, fighting for breath. Mandy, I'm your daughter! Mandy looked away. I'm sorry, Annika, but I can't let you ruin my life. My mother turned around, abandoning me yet again. I lost my grip on the ice and fell back into the water. Fully submerged, black filled my vision. I was drowning. As I drifted closer to death, my mind went to Sake. His smile, his kind heart. I would miss him. Then, a hand grabbed hold of my collar and yanked me out of the freezing water. I gasped for air as Sake rescued me, pulling me back onto the surface. Annika! Sake took off his coat and bundled me up in the warm fur. My teeth chattered as I looked at him gratefully. Thank you, Sake. But my relief was short-lived. Suddenly, Mandy appeared, brandishing her spear, and she charged right at us. Ah! Mandy bulldozed towards us, but she slipped on the ice and instead of killing me, she dropped the spear and fell headfirst through the hole in the ice. We scrambled to rescue her, but by the time we got there, she was already gone. Sake grabbed a hold of me and held me tight. I closed my eyes. So long as Sake was here, I was all right.